classroom that was specifically for, um, that would give the children a strong basis in learning to read, because that read and write, because that's my um, kind of uh, uh, love and that's my job. <laughs> so the whole class, that's the activities that you're going to see the teacher in front of the class and they're doing something together. And a lot of kids will get the skill just by having that whole class activity. But then they break into small group centers. I mean, kindergarten centers is a part of a really big part. And today you're going to get a chance to actually go and do some centers that the teachers have set up specific to phonemic awareness. Now, there's lots of centers in the, in the class that are other skills, math and, and uh, you know, other activities. But today um, you're going to get a chance to take a look at some of the literacy centers uh, specific to community awareness, and I'll talk about what that actually is. And then finally, um, the last group, like the children that are working in small group centers, there may be some children that um, need even a little bit more to get that skill. And that would be our target <coughs> individual instruction. So there are some kids who still aren't quite getting it in a center situation that might need a little bit where an adult comes in and plays the game with the student to help instill that. So there's three kind of levels, and uh, depending on what the skill is, you know, everybody learns at their own rate. And so there's lots of, within the kindergarten classroom, there's a big range of uh, what the, the children are able to do. So that's kind of the targeted, so um, that's, that's one of the things. I want to show you, here. So, Reading, like I said, is my one thing, and I wanted to show you the area of today. The one that I want to talk about specifically is the phonemic awareness. That's that, the pillar on that side. But besides phonemic awareness, before the children even come into school, the foundation of all, all of the, um, the children's ability to read is oral language. And that's what the, your students come in and that's what they've been learning for five years before they even enter our school. So the oral language is a really, really important pillar. And we see a, a big diversity in what the students come in with. So some, some children come in with a really strong base of oral language. <laughs> they've been read to, they've been spoken to a lot, and that's the strength of theirs. And for some students, that's something that we teachers need to build on. And it's certainly something that you continue to build on. And, you know, um, we can talk about some areas where if that is not strong for them, or certainly um, ELL students where English is not their first language, that is you know, a, a big component of um, this that needs to be developed. Okay? Um, I wanted to say, there's um, some statistics where they talk about the the 30 million word gap. And so students, uh, you know, children that are coming from homes, professional homes, you know, that have huge amounts of um, vocabulary as they enter kindergarten, they, they might come in with, uh, you know, enter when they're four years old, they have, you know, um, thousand words, and, and if, when the, by the time they're like seven, it's 11,000. So that between four and seven, that learning vocabulary is huge. It's huge. So they, they you know, more than uh, 10 times, but that's where they learn their language. So it's it's a big part, and, and one of the things that you can develop it is through books, and we'll talk about that later. But the other way is actually through speaking. So there's two, two you know, great ways that you can build that, like, that language with them. One is very different. The, words, the way we, we speak to parents, or the way we speak to our children, the day-to-day -day things we say, like sit down, eat your supper, <laughs> make your lunch, or whatever, those kinds of things, that's our conversational speech. But the book language, that is something that they um, will get only through sitting down reading books. We don't speak the same way that authors write books. So those, that, those are two very, very different kinds of um, vocabulary and language that we can start with. So I just wanted to do my little spiel. Um, a lot of children um, don't <coughs> nowadays um, have, kind of come without having a lot, have a lot of conversations, adult conversations. So that, that conversation that you have, growing in those brave words is good. Um, 
Eli Johnson, who wrote uh, a lot of um, great books about learning to read and interventions in the classroom, has uh, actually compiled lists of words. And this one's a kindergarten list. And so he's saying that it's a hierarchy. So kids come in, and by the end of the kindergarten, we want them to know these words, what these words are. So we're speaking to them, we're not dumbing it down, dumbing down our language, but we're, we're making sure we use these words. Like, I'll just give you some that are on this list. Like, it's kind of as easy as build, act, um, collect, choose, understand, subtract, support, prepare, question. So these are some words that children should be hearing and knowing, and then when they enter um, grade one, and there's another whole list, we build on that vocabulary. <coughs> so vocabulary is a big part that the new vocabulary that they'll also be learning as they enter. So this is, the foundation is the basis, that's what they come in, but then the two pillars on either side, the one I want to talk about is the phonemic awareness part, but, um, and how that differs, differs from uh, phonics. So I, and, but also, I didn't, I want to instill the fact that it's not the only, reading is very complex, learning to read and write is a very complex process, and we can't simply say one part is the be all and the end all, it's a combination of all of those things, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, at the very top comprehension, because that's the most important part, understand, that's, you know, that's what reading's all about, our ability to understand what the author is saying, and then providing the ability for us to communicate to others what we want to say. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to go on to the next slide because, um, yeah, so Stahl says that reading is like an arch, and if any stone is missing, the arch is going to fall. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> this is basically what I was to say, adult conversation, great children's literature, now, we're very, very lucky at Elizabeth Rommel to have a fabulous library. It's really, um, it just, you will not see a library like this big. And so, Kathy has, you know, we pulled a few books to show you how you can use books in many different ways, but some of these books that I've chosen here are um, specific to uh, building the sing-song language, the rhyme, and so that you things that you sit down with the child, and hopefully you've been doing this all <laughs> before, too, and then, then hearing the, the sounds of the language that will you know, help them when they're starting to learn their phonetic awareness. Now, you might say, what is it? When she's talking about phonological awareness, what is that? Phonological awareness is the big umbrella, and underneath the umbrella, the phonemic falls in there. And you don't really have to worry about what that all means, but the um, phonological awareness is the knowledge of sounds and language. So it's making rhymes. As simple as starting from, it, do these two things rhyme, like a yes and no, saying two and then you say yes it does or no it doesn't. That's the very first stage of rhyming, to, you know, moving on past that and then matching pictures that rhyme and then maybe finding one that doesn't rhyme, have three and then which one doesn't rhyme. Um, to finally, their ability to actually make a rhyme. And for them to actually pull a rhyme out, you, know, you say a word and then finding a rhyme, that is the, the most difficult one. Um, also, another part of phonological awareness is, is hearing syllables, beats and words, like funny, happy, those kinds of things. Uh, and then breaking words apart, rainbow. And then finally, the most difficult one would be hearing the individual sounds within a word. K, act, So it kind of is a progression. Um, so children need to know, a lot of times we're talking to them, they don't even know that what we're saying to them are sentences, a sentence, and then a sentence is made up of words. Come to the house. You know, there's, you know, come to the house. There's four words within that sentence. And then within that sentence, there's, within the sentence there's words, within the word, then there are letter groups and letter sounds that represent, letters that represent the sounds. So our goal is to, to break that down. And some children are natural learners and they do all of this very naturally.
naturally, and you say, oh, my, my child can rhyme, my child can hear the first letter sound, my child can hear the last letter sound, they know all of that. And I call those children natural language learners, and there's those, and there's children that where this skill needs to be taught. And it is a very teachable thing. So if you are finding, oh, this is, yeah, you know, this is it, this is tough. Working on this is a lot easier than trying to fix, uh, let's say, a child who's not comprehending. So if, if there is a gap on the comprehension where you're talking to them and they're not understanding what you're saying, that is a, that's a lot more complicated to develop than this. This is a very teachable skill, and we do a lot of things in the, in the kindergarten classroom, moving on to the grade one classroom, that are going to help the child you know, get that aha moment. I get what you mean by that. Um, so the difference between phonemic awareness, where you're hearing the sounds, is all auditory, and phonics. The phonics part is when you add the letter to it. So, you know, cat, what sounds do you hear? Cat. That's all phonemic awareness. But when you actually pull the letter in, you put a C and an A and a T to it, that's the phonics part. So that's when you're actually uh, learning to spell. Now, so the first part of phonemic awareness is rhyme and rhythm, and that's developing the ear for letters. So if you take a book, and I'm just going to use this one as an example, because it's such a so, this creature looks swell in its blue shell. It has no paws, but watch out for its claws. Oh, so um, what you can do is you can see it's a rhyme one. Make one mad, you'll smell bad. Bet you never thought that you could stink like a, you know. So those kinds of things you can get when you're reading when you're reading a book to them. Hold off the last word and try to see if they can get that rhyme with them if they're not getting it. There's a good picture there so they can get it. But those kinds of things, that's the, the rhythm, the rhyme of, of the language. And th that can be, is really fun doing it with games and books. That's, you know, the most fun to do it. Blending is a skill, the next skill. And that's if you say a sound segmented, the, their ability to put it together. So um, I do lots of work with this with uh, my kindergarten and grade one students where I'll say, you know, and I'm going to use cat as an example throughout it all, throughout it all, just so you get it. So I would say, cat, what did I say? And then their ability to put it, to put it together, so to go from pieces to the whole. You might think, oh, everybody can do that, but um, it's, it's not true. <laughs> it, it is a skill that some children have to kind of work. So sometimes we have to go down to cat at, what did I say? And then we put it together, cat. It's holding that the um, onset, which is the first letter, and the rhyme, which are the last two, and putting them together. So sometimes with blending, we have to work, work from that until they can get, until they can put the whole, you know, three letters. One little um, caution, cautionary tale about this is don't do this with, you know, longer words. Longer words, you know, keep it in, in um, syllables or beats like that. We, we do these with consonant, all consonant words, short words, okay? Then uh, the next skill, and you're going to be doing, when you go into your classroom with your teachers, they have activities set up where you're going to be able to do some um, rhyme, rhyming games, and also some sound isolation, the third one. So starting with, in kindergarten, we start with their ability just to hear the first sound. So when I came in in September, one of the things that I did with all the students is I, I set a 